Hi dear students, today we begin our lesson with chapter number one, Cell Structure. After reading this chapter, you should be able to describe and compare the structure of animals, plants and bacterial cells and discuss the non-cellular nature of viruses. Describe the use of light microscopes and electron microscopes to study cells. Draw and measure cell structures. Discuss the varieties of cell structures and their functions. Describe the organization of cells into tissues and organs. And outline the role of ATP in cells. No big deal, just six points. Thinking outside the box. Let me introduce to you one of the scientists called Lynn Marcus, born in 1938-2011. Okay, the greatest achievement was to use evidence from microbiology to help firmly establish an idea that had been around since the mid 19th century that new organism can be created from combination of existing organism which are not necessarily closely related okay dear students remember one thing that 90 percent of the bodies of human are composed of non-human cells it means that most of part most part of our body is composed of bacteria viruses and bacteria and less than 10 percent is composed of human cells it means that these organism has a very important role in developing our body okay this was a theory established by lynn margulis called set serial endosymbiotic theory for example Organism like prokaryote bacteria has a very important role in making our body or in the bodies of living organisms. Uh, now we are going to explain how cell was discovered. One of the scientists called Robert Hooke for the first time observed specimens of plant material under the microscope and he found some boxes. He called those boxes cells. Robert Hooke was completely unaware of the fact that he has discovered a very important unit of all the living organisms. Each cell appeared to be an empty box surrounded by a wall. Hooke had discovered and described without realizing it the fundamental unit of all living things. Although we now know that cell of cork or dead, Further observation of the cell and living material were made by Hooke and other scientists. Okay. Cell theory. Dear students, let me introduce to you two scientists. One is called Schwann and another is called Schleiden. Schwann was a botanist and he found the exact same things Robert Hooke has seen in the cells of cork. Okay. He stated his theory as cell is the basic structural and functional unit of all the plants the same exact theory a year later schwann a zoologist suggested the same for animal means cell is the structural basic structural and functional unit of all the animals okay now to combine these two two theory we get cell theory for example cell is the the cell theory states that the basic unit of structure and function of all living organisms, means plants and animals, is the cell. To it has been added one more theory called the Chose theory of 1855 that all cells arise from pre existing cells by cell division. It means that it completely rejected the theory of abiogenesis. Abiogenesis is actually a theory that living organisms can be produced from non-living organisms, which are now completely rejected. Okay. Why cell? Why cell? It means that why cell is so important for the living organism? 
So this cell look like a bag in which all the important constituent of life are present. Okay, for example, all the organelles, the cytoplasm, the protoplasm are placed in this bag. Okay, the bag is said to be the cell membrane and inside the cell membrane the chemistry of life is allowed to occur okay one thing more i would like to explain is this big called cell separate the cell from rest of the environment the thin membrane called cell surface membrane or cell membrane or plasma membrane is partially permeable it means that it allows only some of the molecule to pass through it and prevent other. In other words, we can say that cell membrane act as the door to the cell. It allows only some of the molecule to move into the cell and some of the molecule to move out of the cells. Okay, so this is one of the functions. Another function is it gives shape to the cell. Cell membrane controls the entry and exit of the cell. Cell biology and microscopy. Okay. The branch of biology deal with the study of cell is said to be cell biology or cytology. And whenever we study cells, we also need to, uh, to study microscope or we can only study them with the help of microscope so that is said to be the microscopy okay types of microscopes cell biology what is cell biology or cytology the branch of biology deal with the study of cells is called cell biology or cytology a cells are invisible to the naked eyes therefore we can only study cells through microscopes so Whenever we study cells, we need to be familiar with the types and uses of microscopes. Okay? Because if you want to study cells, you need to be familiar with the use and types of microscopes. Then you would be able to study this cell structure more effectively. What is microscope? Microscope is a device used to magnify smaller things larger. Some of the cells are very smaller and you may not be able to observe them through the naked eyes. Okay, so all what we need is just to use a microscope. Fundamentally, there are two different types of microscope. One is called light microscope that uses light as a source of energy. And another is called electron microscope that uses beams of electron to observe the specimen. So, let me explain the light microscope first as the name represent uses light as a source to observe the specimen there are of two types namely simple microscope and compound microscope simple microscope so called because it is composed of only one lens for example a hand lens can be called a simple microscope and the magnification power is very low may maybe at more or less 10 times okay it magnify objects up to 10 times compound microscope uh, is composed of a series of two lenses eyepiece lens and nose piece lens okay and the magnification power is uh, around 1500 times it magnifies specimens up to 1500 times now this is the structure of compound microscope. For example, these are said to be the eyepieces or eyepiece lens and this is said to be the nose piece lens. For example, let's suppose this lens magnify objects up to 10 times and this magnify up to 100 times. So 10 multiplied by 100 is equal to 1000 times. It means that the specimen you are going to observe is magnified up to 1000 times. Now, plant and animal cells both are eukaryotic. It means that they are mostly the same. They are closely related to one another. Still, there are different organelles that are present only in the plant cells and other they are present only in the animal cells. But still, they have certain features common. Number one, cell membrane. 
plant and animal, animal cell both contain cell membrane. They contain nucleus and nucleolus. They also contain the cytoplasm. They both contain the chromatin material. They both contain DNA. They both contain mitochondria and they both contain Golgi apparatus. Okay, these are actually the features they are common to plants and animal cells. Now, dear students, look at the structure. Okay, this structure is said to be the plant cells. Okay, now you can see there is a very large vacuole. This is said to be the plasmodesmata. The plasmodesmata is actually a pore they connect the plant cell to neighboring cells. Okay, molecule can move from one cell to another cell. Okay, so other structures are, for example, a cytoskeleton, small membranous vesicles, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, nucleus, nuclear pore, nuclear environment, nucleolus, rough endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, Golgi vesicle, cytoplasm, paroxysomes, mitochondria, etc. These are the different structures of the plant cells. Okay, these are actually the structure chloroplast. Okay, they are only present in the plant cells, not in animal cells vacuole is present in the plant cell because one larger vacuole is present in the plant cell. Vacuole are also present in animal cells but they are smaller in temporary. Organelle. Organelles are can be defined as a functionally and structurally distinct part of a cell. Okay, it means that inside the cell these are distinct parts they have completely different function in structure okay organelles themselves are surrounded by membranes so their activities can be separated from the surrounding cytoplasm this is described as compartmentalization many of the cell contents are colorless and transparent so they need to be stained to be seen for example, if you want to observe the cell, you may not be able to see the cell directly under the microscope. You need to use some specific type of stains and dyes in order to observe them. For example, the word chromosome means colored body. Word chromosomes are actually colorless, means transparent. You cannot see the chromosomes until you have stained them with certain types of dyes or stains. Cell surface membrane. In animal and plant, each is surrounded by a very thin cell surface membrane. This is also sometimes referred to as the cell plasma membrane. The cell plasma, the cell membrane control entry and exit of the cell. Nucleus. Nucleus is considered as heart of the cell. It is also sometimes called brain of the cell. Nucleus contains chromatin and is a mass of loosely called threads. The material collects together to form visible separate chromosomes during the nuclear division. It contains DNA, a molecule which highest. It contains DNA, a molecule which contains the instruction they control the activities of the cells. Within the nucleus lies nucleolus, which is made of loops of DNA from several chromosomes. And the number of nuclei is variable, 1 to 5 being common in mammals. Okay, so Whenever you are going to explain the nucleus, remember 4M, nuclear envelope surrounding the nucleus. There are two, inner nuclear membrane and outer nu nuclear membrane. The outer mem nuclear membrane continues to form endoplasmic reticulum. Nuclear pores are the tiny pores with the help of which Messenger RNA move out of this, of out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm, and also substances move into the nucleus. 
So one end is nuclear nuclear membrane, nuclear pore, nucleolus. Okay, these okay, and now the fourth one, nucleoplasm. Contents they are present inside the nucleus. Cytoplasm. The space between nucleus and cell membrane is filled with the fluid, with the jelly-like material. This is said to be the cytoplasm. All the chemical reaction takes place in here. Cytoplasm is an aqueous material varying from a fluid to a jelly-like consistency. Many small structures can be seen within it. For example, uh, for example almost all of the organelles are present in the cytoplasm and this is actually the site where most of the chemical reaction takes place. Now let me explain the differences between plants and animal cell. Centriole are present only in the animal cell but absent in plant cells. Plant cell contains cell wall, cell wall is absent in animal cell. Plant cell contain one large vacuole in central, animal cell contain many vacuoles but smaller. Plant cell contain chloroplast which is absent in animal cell. Okay. These are a few differences between plant and animal cell. Now, unit of measurement, just because cells and organelles present inside the cells are very smaller, so we can use a different types of unit to observe them. Okay, in order to make the objects in the microscopic world, we need to use smaller units of measurement, which are unfamiliar to most of the people. According to the international agreement, the SI unit should be used. In this cell, in this system, the density unit of length is meter, symbol M. Additional units can be created in multiple of thousand times larger or smaller using standard prefixes for example Kelo means thousand times Okay, fraction of meter in unit symbol one thousand is equal to 0 0.001 is equal to one word thousand is equal to 10 to power minus 3 okay. millimeter mm 1 million micrometer 1000 million nanometer these are actually the smaller units they can be used to measure the size of the cell or structures called organelles inside them electron microscope Electron microscope uses beams of electrons which have much much smaller wavelength than the visible lines Therefore they can observe specimen Much more smaller is compared to be seen with the help of light microscope By 1900 almost all the, the organelles have been discovered There followed a time of frustration for microscopist because they realize that no matter how much the quality, how much the design of the light microscope improved, there was a limit to how much could ever be seen using light. In order to understand why this is, it's necessary to know something about the nature of light itself and to understand the difference between magnification and resolution.